and welcome to your November edition of Book Bites Elementary Nibbles. These are book talks for chapter books for grades 1 through 6. This month we have books that have a strong family theme. We may not be traveling to visit our extended families this Thanksgiving, but these books feature diverse, loving, supportive families and will feel like a hug from your favorite relative. Our first selection for this month's book talk is The Vanderbeekers of 141st Street by Karina Jan Glazer. When the Vanderbeekers learn that their lease hasn't been renewed by their crotchety landlord, the kids spring into action with various plans to win him over and convince him to let them stay in their home. This book is funny, charming, and sweet, and an Obab book for this year. You can register online to discuss this book in our Obab Book Club meeting November 24th over Zoom. Next, we have The Lotteries Plus One by Emma Donahue. After a lottery win, a family is formed by two couples buying a mansion together in Toronto. A gay couple and a lesbian couple eventually adopt seven children and homeschool them among five pets and 32 rooms. It's a vibrant, loud, silly household, but then a surly grandpa arrives for a stay and presents a challenge to our narrator Sumac's sunny life. This book is warm and diverse and focuses on love and acceptance. And the final book for this month's edition is The Misadventures of the Family Fletcher by Dana Allison Levy. In this book, four adopted brothers face a new school year full of changes. New schools that perhaps aren't all you dreamed they might be. New interests, can you play soccer and try out for the school play? New friends that are possibly imaginary, told in alternating narration and full of humor, heart, and a lot of love. And this month, I'll be reading you the first chapter of... The Misadventures of the Family Fletcher by Dana Allison Levy. So here we have chapter one, in which we meet the Fletchers. There's a note. It's from the desk of Jason Fletcher. Boys, happy first day of school. Your lunches are on the counter. Please take the one with your name and only the one with your name, so as to avoid allergic reactions, midday starvation, or the risk of throwing up due to the perceived grossness of your brother's lunch choices. Love, Papa. Eli sat on the wooden porch steps, crammed in with his brothers, while Papa fiddled with the camera. On one side, his youngest brother, Frog, was vibrating with excitement. On the other side, the older two weren't as eager. Take the picture, Sam said through gritted teeth. Clearly, his patience with the ritual of first day of school photos was wearing thin by sixth grade. Got it. The line of four boys separated with the force of bowling pins being knocked every which way. The first day of school meant something different to each of them, but whether they were dreading it or dying to get back, no one wanted to stay on the splintery steps any longer than necessary. This was the first year that all four boys were heading off to real school, if kindergarten counted as real. Eli wasn't sure any place where you glued cotton balls on construction paper was real school, but Frog thought it was and was excited to finally be in the photo. And according to the Fletcher family rules, the photo had to be taken. So it was. Certainly the boys didn't look like brothers, apart from the matching grass-stained knees and monogrammed backpacks. Sam with his tan and his surfer shorts, Jack's all elbows and knees and woolly black afro that he refused to cut, Eli, slight and freckly pale with glasses, and Frog, the size of an average four-year-old despite being six. Frog seemed to have the energy of at least three six-year-olds, but in a very concentrated size. Eli fidgeted with his backpack and watched as Zach's, Jack's ran into the yard and punted the bright orange soccer ball that had been sitting in the middle of the lawn. It sailed neatly over the low shrub and into the new neighbor's yard, where it stuck deep in a prickly-looking bush. No, Sam looked up from his phone screen. That's my favorite ball, and you know he's going to be a total jerk about it. Why'd you do that? He moved to slug Jax, but Jax dodged quickly out of the way. Eli figured Jax's speed always increased around 20% when he was avoiding being whacked by Sam. Sorry, I'll go grab it, Jax said. No, nobody go anywhere. Sam, we have approximately three million other soccer balls around here, and we need to launch— But, Jax, we have given repeated warnings. Papa's voice came from behind the porch chair where he had dropped his camera lens cap. I know you miss having the Kellehers next door. We were all sorry when they moved. But for better or worse, we have Mr. Nelson now. And he does not appreciate the balls, street hockey pucks, and other items that you keep sending over. After the rather difficult conversation with Officer Hollis on Labor Day, the less we bug Mr. Nelson, the better. 
Eli knew he wasn't kidding. When the family had come home from their vacation last month, the Kelleher's house had no longer had the for sale sign swinging in front of it. Instead of a basketball hoop, the driveway now had nothing but an extremely shiny old Buick, and the yard, which had been remarkable only for the dandelions, was now all spruced up with what looked like hundreds of carefully transplanted flowers, flowers that apparently weren't able to withstand the occasional ball. Old Mr. Nelson didn't seem as fancy as his flowers. He was kind of grizzled looking. He scowled at the boys when he walked his yappy little dog and ignored them the rest of the time. But calling the police on their sing-along had definitely been what Eli's history book would call an escalation. Why couldn't someone cool with kids have moved in? Jax mumbled. Nobody bothered to answer him. Papa, is it time to go? Will my name tag say Frog? Frog jumped up and down in excitement. Or will it say Jeremiah? I hate when it says my real name. Don't worry, Froggy, said Jax helpfully. They'll probably just call you Doofus. They will not, Frog retorted. And Papa, do you think they'll keep the seat next to mine safe for Flair? He's coming today, too, you know. Papa ignored the mention of Flair, Frog's imaginary best friend who happened to be a cheetah, and concentrated on shutting down his camera. Eli agreed with this strategy. It was never a good idea to try to talk Frog out of his imaginary creatures. Once the camera was carefully placed back in its case, the launch began in earnest. This year, Sam and Jax would bike or walk together most of the time, but today, with all the school supplies, they rode with Papa. Eli had a little pang that he and Jax weren't starting fourth grade together. They had always been in the same grade at the same school, even if they hadn't been in the same class, and he would miss the comfort of having Jax nearby. But changing schools had been his choice. He wasn't going to worry about it now. Sam and Jax milled around, double-checking binders and colored pencils, while Papa tried to figure out where he had left his keys. Frog, who was supposed to get in the car with Eli, was ugh, licking his hand and smoothing down his dark wispy hair in an effort to make it stay flat. Finally, he climbed in and started to buckle his booster seat. Eli watched all this from his own seat, buckled in and patiently waiting for Dad to get in and take him to Narnia, to Hogwarts, to Neverland. Eli was starting a new school this far, fall, one for gifted students, and he was more than ready. He opened the car door and shouted, Dad, you're driving me, right? I don't want to be late. Close the door. Flair is getting chilly, Frog commanded. Eli ignored him. I'm coming, Eli, Tom Anderson, known to the boys as Dad, answered as he walked down the driveway. He got into the van, clutching his coffee mug with one hand while trying desperately to shove his lunch into his briefcase with the other. We just have to drop Frog off first. You'll be there in plenty of time. I'm just hoping I will. I have a department meeting before my first class. But your school's on the way to Middleton High. Sort of. Well, it's not in the opposite direction. He sighed, giving up and dropping the lunch onto the already cluttered passenger seat of the van. His coffee spilled slightly as it fell with a clunk on an acorn that was destabilizing the cup holder. Crap! Napple, he muttered, trying to keep the coffee off his papers. Dad, was that a rude word? Eli said, straining forward against his seatbelt. No rude words in front of us. You owe a quarter to the rude box. No, it was crayon apple. There's nothing rude about crayon apple. It's a kind of juice. Dad reversed the car out of the driveway. Okay. Off to Froggy's kindergarten. I can't wait to see your classroom. Eli sighed. It had been four months and 28 days, or approximately 216,000 minutes, since he'd found out he'd been admitted to Pinnacle. He guessed a little longer wouldn't matter. And that's the end of chapter one. And as I said, the book has (laughs) alternating narrators, which means the next chapter is from the, the point of view of Jax. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to check this book out in ebook, digital audiobook, audiobook CD, or physical form. I hope you've enjoyed this month's edition of Book Bites Elementary Nibbles. Another reminder that this month the Obob Book Club will be discussing the Vanderbeekers and doing some trivia about the book on November 24th at 4 p.m., so feel free to join us. And as always, you can check out these three books and some other great family reads on our BiblioCommons list. Have a safe and happy Thanksgiving and a wonderfully cozy November. Thank you.